you know, as I've, I've been in the business a long time, and when I'm walking the IAPA floor and I see something new or different, especially if it has something to do and involves play, it seems inevitable that I soon, sooner or later find out that our next speaker somehow had a hand in creating it. Uh, since she was seven years old, Denise Weston has been developing unique and innovative experience attractions for friends and families and ultimately audiences around the world. She's a trained psychologist with more than 15 years of clinical practice and research, and she's applied that knowledge and experience to the development of numerous play systems and technological advances in experience design. She holds over 40 patents and has written three books about play and its use in parenting and building character. My favorite line from her bio is, find the zipper and give me an unzip and you'll discover I'm actually a seven-year-old wearing a lady suit. <laughs> Currently, the Director of Creative Development and Imagination at Aptivations LLC, as well as Director of Imagination for Whitewater West Industries, the world's largest producer of water parks. Please welcome our next speaker, Denise Weston. Thank you, Aaron. I'm so glad I'm here, and thank you, Phil, for the invitation. It's been a great journey to be in this industry, and I'm glad to see both students and my colleagues alike here, so thanks for coming. I'm going to put this phone down because it's part of the presentation. Uh-oh. I think I'll have to take this off. Huh? <laughs> now I can show you my biceps. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Did not intend that in this morning's dress-up procedures, although the zipper still is there. So, pretty interesting way of re-saying storytelling is story sharing, right? So the reason that I'm bringing that word in here is because my entire career has been about thinking about what the guest or the person or my client or a child or a mother has to share with me about their story and their experiences in life. And then I have to take that in as a part of my journey and being able to present back to them the very best way they can live life. And so when I translated my skills after I started my journey writing books about how I could teach people how to do what I did in a therapy office so that they could work with their own children to solve their problems. And that was all through play. So in order to do that, I had to really understand how people express themselves through play. And that sharing of how they tell their story through play was a very important process for me. And I think it's an important process for designers, developers, inventors, and all of us as we take a journey into bringing stories to life. Now, the interesting thing about that is, when I did that, I found out very clearly, right from the very beginning, that story sharing, when you're in the process of sharing a story with what you wanna tell and what they wanna tell, the guest becomes the primary experience. In fact, it's all about them. It always is and even more so today, and I'll explain that later. But when I invented, uh-oh, the blackness <laughs> that takes over our lives, and we wait until Joe has a handle on it back there. <laughs> well, there's this really great picture. <laughs> Imagine <laughs> a picture of Magic Quest which is my first invention that I brought using a merging of technology and interactivity. Oh wait, no, engagement. So that we could do the story come to life with the character being you. And let me tell you a little bit about how that came about because what I'd love to be able to do is to share, you, share with you how I think and then perhaps you could look at your life and your design and the way that you look at people coming into your experiences and understand how they are experiencing what you want, but also what they want. So a lot of that is still black. I'm, I'm gonna turn around and it's gonna change. <laughs> really? <laughs> now there's nobody back there either. <laughs> We're gonna put this down and I'm gonna try some other techniques that I have now. <laughs> 
So in Magic Quest, what I did is I was able to take the idea of watching my kids as a mother. Actually, it didn't have anything to do with being a playologist. It was about being a mother, watching my kids tell stories after they played a video game. It, it was, first of all, it was very disturbing for my three and four year old at the time to be sucking so much of their play life out in these video games. And it used to really bother me. I used to look at it and say, oh, this is not play. This is not what I want. You know, in generations before, it's like sitting in front of the television instead of going outside. Well, now it's the video games. And I, as a mother, could not tolerate what that was about. But I could see that I wasn't going to be powerful enough in the way that they were playing to change that. So I decided to join it. And I watched. I carefully watched what they were doing both when they were playing in the screen and how they took that experience later. What was so fascinating about it is that when they were telling the story, they were the hero. They were the main character and they were going through the whole experience on their own. So really, the technology behind Magic Quest, don't look behind the curtain, is that you are really the superhero of your live action, basically actual reality story coming to life. And we're going to track you, we're going to know what you do, you're going to have your magic wand, and you're going to make things happen. And when that does happen, when you are actually able to learn from your guests, I learned from my kids, I learned from other children, what it, their behaviors were in the experience, and then translate that into a live experience, their story, mine too, became very clear and rewarding and something they wanted to do over and over again. And it was a little bit different with everything they did. Still not there. <laughs> when, I'm gonna remember the next slide. Is that, okay. Oh, I know what it was. So that, so, okay, now imagine we take Magic Quest, it disappears, I show you a couple of magic wands, and then I say to you. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, this is something, you know, the improv scene here. So that I, thank you. <laughs> so then after I was able to look at that, and this is something I encourage you all to do when you're looking at children's behavior or your guest behavior, is I began to realize that I'm the student of the guest and that the story experience that I'm trying to actualize, it's very important and clear that I have to make sure that I come where they're coming from, that I learn from them and what they're trying to do. So recently, and this, the next slide comes up, I started taking a journey into looking at the storytelling of a printed book. So it's kind of a bummer. First, we all know the storytelling in a printed book is having some trouble. There's other devices and things that make storytelling on a device much more engaging and interactive and graphic and visual and beautiful. I think, oh, what about the traditions of holding a book and turning the page, right? You know, feeling that, sitting there with that story. A little difficult when you have such a competition with this tech technology. Okay, so like with Magic Quest and the video games, instead of trying to beat it, I joined it. And it was very successful, so I said, how can I join it? What can I do to join the experience of having a story come to life on a digital device? So not using a print book. But then if I took that digital device and turned it into a theater, a, like a live experience of storytelling, can I draw from it all the tools that it has and tell a better story or engage better or be more relevant to the reader? So I addressed the young adult the ones that aren't reading as much as they used to. They kind of snack on tidbits of technology and they tell stories in very different ways. And what I did is I wrote a book that used everything the iPad had to offer. And I was able to tell a story by engaging different perspectives at the same time. Now you can't do that with a print book. So suddenly as a storyteller, as a story sharer, I had the ability to engage people differently then I thought of before, so you know what, it's not so bad. Not only am I kind of paginating in a narrative, but now I'm clicking on little words and I'm switching perspectives. And suddenly, illustrations are coming to life. Audio is working. Oh my God, thank you. <laughs> I love you all, thank you for coming back. 
Let me get to that. As I was saying, and this is the Magic Quest one, and this is the thing about stories. Oh, wait, this is the one I, you get to see. Old storytelling, this is the bird in town. This is the new bird in town. <laughs> ah, so like, wow, I grew up with that, and they're growing up with this. This is a very different kind of storytelling. This can really mess things up. It can mess them up unless you want to join them. So the memory machine, with, oh, here's something that's really cool. Marissa Garner came to say about two years ago, talking about Magic Quest. And someone knew who she was, or I was, who invented it, got us together, and she was the illustrator on this book. Isn't that cool? See, this really can happen. So, oh, and she's phenomenal. So what we did is she told it through illustration. I told it through narrative, the 18-year-old girl, which is basically a story about a grandfather with Alzheimer's, grandson with autism, come together to build a memory machine to help return his memories. And everything that I did in that story is coming from all these different perspectives, because I can. Because the device is an incredible experience. And if I didn't get all bent out of shape that it wasn't a traditional storytelling experience, I could use all these vehicles as a way of making it melt together and using the technology as an advancement for myself. Now, I still get a lot of pushback, especially from traditional storytellers, that we should get back into print and narrative and do all that as well. But I found this a beautiful advantage by embracing the technology like I did with video games and Magic Quest in the way I told the story on a digital device. Now, as a behavior sort of researcher, how I look at behavior, how I enter this, not completely a designer or a storyteller, but mostly sort of like wanting to know how people are behaving in the experience, really helps because I looked at their behaviors and I used it, how they tapped and swiped themselves through a story, how they connected with, let's say, virtual and tweeting and whatnot, and made that a part of what I was doing with the story. So all that taught me something else, is to pay attention and not be so afraid of these story sharing devices. Although threatening to us, because one of my greatest heroes, Joe Rody, oh, I love this dude, love this. We met each other, he's got these earrings on this side, I got these bracelets on it, and we're like, wow. <laughs> See, we gotta work together. And it was on the same side, he had them all on this side, I'm all on this side, we're like, Ooh, connected somehow. So he, so he at, actually was at that dinner. He explained to me the, like, how drilled down you can get in a thematic space by telling a story with doors. Oh, wow. I mean, this was tremendous. How he went into detail about his design in Animal Kingdom and the doors that he picked down to the handles and the hinges. And if you didn't put the right hinge or the handle and the carving, you ruin the story. So like the details of it, I thought, this is just amazing, because he was right. And I literally, the next time I went to Animal Kingdom, I stand in front of the door, and it was like this humongous story coming to life in front of me, and it was a beautiful execution of storytelling. So then I thought to myself, but these tools that we use, like the thematic representations and what we put, are very different than what the tools are today that people are bringing to share their story with other people. So, where's the doors? It's their faces, it's this device, all those things that we worked on, the big weenie in the background, everything's kind of disappearing when they share their story because it's coming from this perspective. And so just like the digital device and the print book and the video games and watching that disappear, some arts and traditions of storytelling and playing disappearing, now what? This is coming with them on their experiences. And they're sharing stories, their story, exactly how they want to tell it, not the way we want to tell it. And it is pretty cool sometimes and not so cool. Do you know what this is? This is a park in China that has a walkway for people with their devices. <laughs> Ew! <laughs> so, so, so now you don't even have to look where you're going. You could just basically walk 
And you know, one arrow's on this way, one arrow's on that. No, I don't mean that. And I certainly would never recommend that these divides become that powerful that you don't notice anything else around you. But I went to EAS, the uh, European trade show, with my daughter, who's 23. She's also one of the people that started me when I was beginning Magic Quest. It was some of her ideas that brought it to life. She's now 23. And we went to Amsterdam, and so did the phone, <laughs> and so did this guy. <laughs> oh my God. It was constant. I mean, everything in the whole Amsterdam trip was he, and then sending, finding a cafe and sending it. And, and I'm like, wait a minute, I'm, we're in Amsterdam. We have a lot to see. This is a great story. There's like stories from way, way past that you need to know. And I thought, wait a minute, let me just stop, and like I did when she was three, pay attention to her and see what she's doing, because this is relevant to her. And it's important, and she wants to share with her friends back in New England what she's doing. So what is happening here? And can I use this device as a way of us having a great time together and connecting? So yes, obviously, we did that. But we also did this. a great time. That's for my daughter. So she put that together for me and it, it was one of the, my most favorite trips I have had with my kids or kid. And it involved that phone and it involved Snapchatting and videos and plotting and thinking and the story of Amsterdam and it was a great story sharing experience. And I don't know, we've got like 200 likes so far. And, you know, and it's really an amazing experience to integrate the technology in a way that tells a great story that you both can share forever. And what if that is what we think about, is not necessarily how to sit back and say we need to not bring technology and we want you to see everything that we built, but we think about how we place those little bombs in so that we can give you a moment that is phenomenal, that you can share and share with your friends and make it something that's lasting and meaningful to you. So these were hysterical to me because I thought, what if we really did that? What if we had moments where you 
had just the beauty shots and all the great little theming. And you also had these really great places that you could stand, let's say stand in the middle of the princesses, and make your face just like that. Or if you were able to stand next to uh, and would even be able to do that pose as well. I think that that's a fantastic way to look at the integration of telling story and allowing them, us, everyone, carrying these devices around to tell it with you. Now, before I play this, I want, has anyone seen this? Yeah, yeah, it's wonderful. Isn't it fantastic? Okay, now, let's get really big idea. Okay, let's like go way up there and think. What if the devices themselves were actually part of something you did while you were at the experience and by connecting with others or connecting with visuals, you can continue the story and be a part of it and actually add and contribute. So play this, I just, this is amazing to me to watch, it's the students too that did this together. <laughs> One, two, three, go. Knock, knock, tell me where you are. I know that I'm close, but we're apart. Somebody told me you were here. Somebody told me I wish I could ever find you. Wish I could ever find you Hey, ring, ring, please pick up the phone I know that I'm asking for too much I swear I promise you that I'm not gonna say a word If you don't wanna listen, listen Is there something I could do? Please don't leave me in the morning Tell me everything has got to be right I said, oh paper, don't leave me alone This Saturday night Oh please don't leave me in the morning Tell me everything has got to be right I said, oh paper, don't leave me alone This Saturday night Knock, knock, tell me who you are Who and what are you looking for? Just show me where you're going to Or at least let me know If I could ever find you If I could ever find you Hey, hey, hey Please don't leave me in the morning Tell me everything has got to be right I said, oh baby, don't leave me alone This Saturday night Oh please don't leave me in the morning Tell me everything has got to be right I said, oh baby, don't leave me alone The Saturday night The Saturday night The Saturday night What is phenomenal about that is, you know, setting at a table all in real time. So we're in real time, we're live. And what if that was part of the experience and by clicking next to your guest or to somebody standing next to you or to the visual screen, you continued the story and were part of it and able to take it home. These are great ideas. And this is not something we should be so afraid of that we make lines so people can walk like this. But we look at it as a tool, as a remote control, as a way of making digital sharing and story sharing a really nice, engaging, I didn't say interactive, experience. Thank you. <laughs> Questions? Hi, um, I was just wondering how you feel about things like My Disney Experience, which Disney is using now to get through the parks and give you uh, fast passes and everything, and how it doesn't really help you do much more than just plan your trip. 
and how can you make that more helping to tell you the story of your trip and show people the story later as opposed to just doing right now like book reservations and things? So I'm going to do the techniques I usually do when I'm looking at a really great question and understand that you probably have the answer. So before I answer, what do you think? <laughs> Was I right? <laughs> I feel like there's, they do have the photos that you can put on My Disney Experience and everything, which is nice, and you can get, there are photo pe past people all over Disney World that'll take your picture, and you can add little special things, or they can do it for you. But they tried putting out that story app at one point, the, yeah, you know what I'm talking about, and <laughs> that wasn't successful, and it was sad that it wasn't successful, because that, I feel like a good part of the word that we're not supposed to use anymore um, story is that when people feel like they're personally involved in it, it's individualized, that's when they become more engaged and more immersed in it. So if there were a way to do that with my, my Disney experience, that's going to make everyone's visit that much more special and make it worth coming back for another one because so, of those things. I think that's incredible what she said, and I think it's a learning point for us because I think behavior has changed in terms of how we are coming to theme parks and how we're experiencing live entertainment. And we have to consider that, they, that the new guest is even more empowered to share a personal story. And they're doing it, like live at the second. We were, it was very different before. In fact, you had to wait for your pictures to come. And you know the Polaroid maybe was the only way if you waved it and you can see it faster. But now, it's instantaneously they're sharing that story. And it's what's important to them. And we should figure out what that is, what is important, and what we could do to do that. The other thing, too, is there's a balance. And this is the one that I think would be a great discussion to have with all the talent that's here. There's a balance between the story we want to tell and the story the guest wants to tell. And how can you do both simultaneously so it feels like a synergistic moment between you and the guest? And how can you use the, where they're coming from and what you want them to know, what they expect, right? That expectation they have, so that you join both forces together. And at the end of that trip, you're not saying, well, it was a good idea, but you didn't really deliver. So we need to sit back and look and listen and try to understand the behaviors. They're changing very, very quickly. But what are those behaviors, and what are they doing, and what do we need to do to capture it? Like the instantaneous moment I thought of photobomb mom was because there w I could not engage with what my daughter was doing. That Snapchat was driving me crazy, and I said, I'm just going to jump in and join her, literally jump into all of her photos and join her. And it was probably the highlight of our trip. Unknown, I didn't realize it until then. And that became, that's becoming a leading, you know, driver for me now, what kind of apps can we offer so that they can become the star of their own experience? What can we do to put the little, you know, perfect bombs into the, our settings? So when we're designing, we also customize it so that they can take part in it. And how do we make it more free-flowing so we don't direct them down the line of our story and they can break off and do what they need to do? That would be my response to that. Anybody else? How did I do with my guns? Awesome. <laughs> Pretty good. Um, hello. I just had a question regarding um, sort of the integration of technology, like my iPad. I was starting my sophomore, into my sophomore year, my school uh, went, became a one-to-one -one iPad school. And um, after they worked out all the problems and got everyone's GPA back up from playing games, mm -hmm. um, they, I found that it was actually a very effective learning tool because it allowed for classrooms to interact and we could do interactive game activities that didn't require a bunch of wiring and setup. And it was a lot of instantaneous feedback between the teachers and the students. And I was just wondering what your opinion was on this kind of technology being used in parks and what, that, what we may see with that in the future. So I obviously think it's a, it's a tool that we have to pay attention to because it's going to come anyway. So now do we, do we make the, the past lines or do we actually integrate these tools into us? We have to do both a good job of recognizing that these tools are in their hands and they're important to our guests, while at the same time, that's why I showed that video at the end, is because what I loved about that is that it was a great story. First of all, it's a fantastic story. And I, I was mesmerized by it. 
I wanted to watch. I wanted to see where they were going to go next. While at the same time, I was dazzled with the technology. It's a nice balance of both. Both like, boy, that was genius, and look how they did that, which I think is great. We still want our guests to do that, like be dazzled with the way that we entertain them. But we also have to look at, can we put that in their person? Can we give that to them? Can they be one of the sharers of the story? Can they contribute with their devices and help us make it come to life? And sometimes it's going to be things that they come up with, and sometimes it's going to be things that we kind of hint or move them towards. But I think the integration of these devices need to be carefully thought through as we incorporate story sharing into our parks. I don't necessarily mean the storytelling part where we're explaining or giving them exactly what they expect. I thought Raul did a great job of explaining that this morning. But I'm talking about what they're bringing with them and how we can make that a, an important part of our story too. So I think they're great devices as long as we manage the process and don't overwhelm ourselves with the technology for the face plant. That's it. That's like a big no-no, a step away from the face plant. But how, would, how is it a remote control in the park that makes their experience better? What are your thoughts about the uh, Phineas and Ferb experience at Epcot World Showcase that was previously uh, the, what was it? Impossible. Impossible where they have the cell phones that are interacting with the park. Well, it's very magic questy, so I loved it. Um, and <laughs> that's a short answer, but the long one is it's phenomenal thinking, and they did it on the cruise lines as well, and I think that they're doing more um, on the live side of just having live actors as a part of Disneyland, and I think it's a fantastic, it's, it's a tough thing to do, I have to say, when you give that much control to your guest, and that they are the ones that are allowed to actually take over the story and make their contributions. It's a scary place to be. Because a lot of times we want to control where they're going and what they're doing and head them towards the, the weenie at the end and get them where we need them to be. And then when you start giving them control and they're diverging off the path and it's a little kind of free form, it's a little unnerving operations wise and where are they going and what are we doing. But if we do a brilliant job at it, then not only are we going to get them more engaged in working with us, but they're going to be able to share what they think the story should be. So I thought it was brilliant. I love it. Do you think there's any danger in the future of this becoming so successful and so embraced in a technology failure, either someone loses their device or there's a, a, a you know, technology blackout and it negatively affecting the experience because everyone's embraced it so heavily. I could say in the 20 years of playing with technology in this industry that, it, that has clearly happened and it is a very disappointing part of growth is that you take risks, especially technology. It happens on rides, it happens in so many different features and what is difficult is managing expectations is a lot of times we have such high expectations as technology users I was thinking about I was watching this one video about the rotary phone and like I grew up with that sorry I might have the guns but I'm back then and how if the number had a zero in it how long it took to get around to that and now like we don't immediately connect I'm just as bad that I I get so upset that it's not like, you know, connecting and whatnot. So when you start going to technology, expectations of the user is very, very high. And if it doesn't happen like they expect it to happen, we can disappoint. Sometimes I think it's risks we should take. Other times we have to make sure that we're more flawless than, than making mistakes. But yes, it's definitely happened in my career where the technology has gone down and it's been disappointing. They have great questions. Thanks for sharing. <laughs> you, you demonstrated it a little bit in your last um, video, the, the sense of something, a, a goal having to be completed by a number of people in the same room. And it seems to me that this kind of technology is getting away from, I am buried in my phone sharing something with somebody, but they're you know, far away, they're just a screen, to actually technology coming in and, and, and people creating a story in the same physical space, kind of 
re restoring a sense of place and a sense of community. Are you seeing that trend or do you think that's going to be a trend moving forward is actually kind of the restoration of, of community through technology? I feel like my purpose has been completed, that there's one person here I know that realized what I was trying to do with that. Yes, exactly. Thank you. I think that is the goal. And I think that, again, the devices and the face plan to become something that we communicate with, where we can enjoy and bring community together. I think we're already doing it. I think the guests are already doing it. How do we tap into that and make it stronger? It's a great question. And I think you answered it with the way that you brought in the words like community and, um, and integration, where you're in the same room and you're not in your phone, but you're with each other and you have purpose with it. I love that. That's great. Anything else? Another question? Um, what is your question? Um, in terms of, in terms of uh, technology uh, and the, the universal nature uh, of technology is very fragmented in terms, for example, you guys, you showed an app which uses Apple uh, and Apple's technology and that is meshing, uh, which is something they've been pushing pretty hard, especially with RFID and the, um, the iBeacon and uh, things like that, uh, where Samsung may not have, or Samsung or Android, Google, et cetera, may not have that type of technology. So my opinion is, or not opinion, my answer, or question is, um, what do you think is the storyteller or the uh, technologist within storytelling supposed to do if the dilemma is, do I create my own technology to facilitate this experience, or do I use current technology that's available because it seems like, because they're at different stages within technology, what do you do in that? In that? Uh, that's, uh, that's another beautiful question and it has to do with invention. And it has to make, you have to make a dis decision at certain points and let's, let's get more into a little on the technology side but on the storytelling side. When you get to a place in storytelling and you realize you don't have the technology, then you have to go into invention and make your own things work, your own platforms work, which I've done numerous times and I know some of the people in this room have done too. And what, what that means to me at least, and I think we could look at this together, is that there are so many technologies and platforms to use that we can integrate that are right there for you to enjoy and to support your storytelling, your story sharing experiences. And then some of it isn't there. In fact, when I was working on the memory machine, I wasn't able to make the audio work on an EPUB 3, which is the way that the stories are told on an iPad. And on the Kindle, I couldn't use video or anything. It's just basically uh, hyperlinks. So even though those technologies are there, and I had this immense story to tell, the devices weren't ready for this yet. And I have to move towards an app, actually, to make it work, and not a book, not an not a e-book. And those are the kinds of lessons we learn. We accommodate, I still delivered. And I think we all can deliver. We have to look at those technologies, understand what we have, don't be afraid of invention, but use what we're given in the platforms that are available to us. They're, they'll catch up. I mean, when they see users going in a certain direction and people you know, putting credibility to certain technologies, they'll involve them more. But don't be afraid to invent, because that's my favorite thing of all. You guys had great questions. Excellent questions. Thank you. Thanks.